Paddling TV is brought to you by Old Town and the new Camden family of recreational kayaks. Affordable but loaded with a richness of features not found on most rec kayaks. Check out the new Camden kayaks at OldTownCanoe.com. But soon you tie back your long hair and dress yourself before the... If you live in a hot part of the world that has warm water, dressing for kayaking is simple. Your biggest challenge will be staying cool, hydrated, and protected from the sun. And this should be something that you're used to doing. The most simple solution involves using sunscreen and wearing a hat. Sunglasses are also helpful because the glare off the water can be blinding, and you'll want to use some type of retainer strap so you don't lose them. Of course, the best way to protect yourself from the sun is to cover up, so you might want to wear a light, long sleeve shirt. Below the waist, surf shorts and water shoes or sandals like Keva's work great. Dressing for cold water is far more difficult, especially when the air is warm. Even on the hottest days, if you find yourself swimming, the cold water can suck the heat out of your body at a surprising speed. If you're paddling a sit on top kayak, you have to expect that your lower body is going to be wet, whereas a sit inside kayak will protect you a lot more from both the wind and the water. On the other hand, if you flip when paddling a sit on top kayak, you can just climb back on the boat. But if you flip in a sit inside, it'll take a lot longer to get back on board, which means you'll spend more time in the cold water. Of course, the best strategy is to avoid capsizing altogether, and this is easy to do in a wreck kayak, as long as you stay in areas that are protected from heavy wind and waves. On the other hand, if you're going to paddle a narrow sea kayak in cold water, you should take professional instruction and learn the different capsize recovery techniques. Whatever boat you're paddling, it only makes sense that you stay close to shore, so that if you do flip, you have the option of just swimming to shore while your buddies gather your equipment. If you're going to be paddling in more committing areas where you won't be able to get to shore very often, it's important to choose the right clothing. You want to be able to wear something that will keep you warm if you get wet, but that you won't overheat in when you're paddling. A neoprene Farmer John wetsuit works well for this purpose because it insulates when it's wet and doesn't get in the way while you're paddling. When both the water and air temperature are cold, you have to be aware of the threat of hypothermia and understand that paddling in these types of conditions isn't for everyone. But if you are going to hit the water, you need to use clothing that will keep you warm, even when they're wet. Synthetic fabrics like fleece, neoprene, and polypropylene are good for this reason, and it's best to use a couple thinner layers instead of one thick layer. Wool also works well, although it's slow to dry and heavy when it's wet. Cotton is one of the all-time worst materials to wear when it's cold. Cotton actually draws heat from your body when it's wet. Over top, you'll want to have an outer shell that keeps the wind off your body. A waterproof nylon jacket and pants will do the trick. But at your local outdoor or paddling shop, you'll find paddling tops and bottoms that are designed specifically for the purpose. On your feet, neoprene booties and even a pair of wool socks will help keep your toes warm. The ultimate protection against the cold, though, is the dry suit. A dry suit uses latex gaskets at the ankles, wrists, and at the neck, which keeps all the water out. Dry suits are expensive, but if you spend a lot of time paddling in cold conditions, they're well worth the price. If you're using a sit-inside kayak, you can also wear a spray skirt, which keeps the cold water out, keeps the hot air in. When you're putting on a spray skirt, you want to start at the back and work your way up along the combing. And then pull the skirt over the front combing, making sure you leave the rip cord out. Because that's what you're going to pull to pop the spray skirt if you do end up flipping. <laughs> 